Hello everybody, my name is Chris, and welcome back to more Mass Effect 3. So, last episode we went around the Citadel a little bit more, because uh, we noticed on the map that there was a number of other people we could interact with, including James, who we still had to have a drink with down in Purgatory. So, we went around, we had a good time, we talked to a number of, number of people, some new faces. It was really interesting. Right, one of which was Arya Talak. The Arya Talak of Omega, right? The Arya. And we were like, why is she here? Why is she here? She she not only runs Omega, but she has, she's perfectly, she's in a perfect position there, right? Especially how we left it in Mass Effect 2. Turns out she's gotten kicked out of Omega. She got kicked out of Omega by Cerberus, by the elusive man. He went and exploited an opening, a chance that he had and shoved Arya out of there. And so now, now she is officially an immigrant to the Citadel as a refugee. And she hates that. She was so mad. First of all, she hates Tim, which I get on the same, we're on the same wavelength with that, right? But she's like, it's personal and she is pissed. And she wants to take back Omega with real aggressive force from him because right now Cerberus owns Omega right they took over which is just that's a wild move by Tim to like go out that way and and do that right um, but Arya's plan is to unite the the Eclipse the Blue Suns and the Blood Pack right the three big mercenary bands that we dealt with in Mass Effect 2 she wants to bring them together underneath her and that would be not only a massive asset to her and probably enough force to at least push back against servers but to to use that to assist in the war against the reapers that was her that was her deal that was her deal that she proposed to us she said if you help get these guys together right because she already set up meetings and she set up like this sort of she set the groundwork for the the unification right she set the groundwork for the unification of all of the mercenary bands we just kind of need to facilitate and finalize a lot of that stuff so we went around and we got we got the uh we got the eclipse and we got the blood pack sorted out they their situation is done, and they are they are committed to Arya. However, there is a small situation with the Blue Suns, uh, and because is that we can't we can't really finish that yet, right? But the Blue Suns are being stopped by General Araka, General Araka, who we haven't heard about since Mass Effect One, and it's really funny when we met him. Right, because in Mass Effect One, you remember, right? Uh, we met him in the bar. He was getting completely wasted because he was having a fucking crisis. He was having, just he, he was having a he was having a bad time. He was completely wrecked over the fact that the Asari consort Shaira rejected him. Rejected him. This guy is a Turian general in the military. And and he is he has been broken and shattered because the is the consort who is who is a really influential figure, right? It's like it's not just anybody, but still, right? Like she rejected him, and he he couldn't handle that. It's kind of embarrassing, honestly. It's like, geez, we talked to him. It's like, general, get your shit together, dude. Oh my god. Like 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 brother, I get it, but god damn shit so it's he's he's not in that mode anymore right but it seems like he's definitely overcorrecting because he's actively trying to take down the blue suns right because they're intercepting like supply transports and he's trying to stop them which again great thing however in this specific circumstance because we are trying to get the blue suns to be part of Arya's whole thing they they, they will agree to this alliance with Arya, right, to work under her, 
if we stop General Iraq from doing this shit. So, any other day would be fine. But unfortunately, not today. So we have to... We have to convince him to stop, and we need, in order to do that, we gotta get weapons. This is a whole lot of things we gotta do, right? In order to do those things, there's other steps, right? So far, we don't know how to take those steps, but I'm sure we will when we go find... Probably either find stuff, either at other shops or, like, missions, right? Because we gotta find, like, artifacts in order to get the supplies that Iraq needs to stop messing with the Blue Suns. Right. But also, <laughs> also, right, we picked up a number of other side missions while we were there, right? Uh, we're not worried about that yet. Uh, Metagel, all these, all these other things, we're going to find kind of along the way, I imagine, because we checked everywhere on the Citadel. We looked in every shop. We, we've seen... What I believe is probably everything we could see. Right? Because we have to go get back on track. Right? We've been messing around. We've been having too much fun on the side. Right? We got a we got a war to fight. We gotta set up we gotta set up a meeting. Right? But before we do that, I'm gonna go back real quick. And I'm gonna cut over to it so you, you, it's gonna be quick. I'm going to go back through the Citadel because I'm not sure if there was anything else that we really missed. Because I was pretty confident. But I'm going to double check just in case. Because I feel like once we go and start doing other missions, things are going to change there. And I don't want us to like miss something. Potentially, I might still. But anyway, so we're going to cut over to that if there is anything. If not, we're going to cut right back here. It'll be fine. Well, it showed Cortez actually on the map here. So, that's, that's actually cool. Because we talked to him briefly on the last, last episode. He actually took that, the shore leave suggestion, right? Went out and about and kind of trying to clear his head and be in a better space, right? So. <sighs> hey, man. Are you okay? I've just been standing here, holding this for I don't know how long. He'll always be a part of me. Your past is yours. No one can take that away. I love you, but I know you. Don't make me an anchor. Promise me, Steve. <sighs> Goodbye, Robert. You give me strength. Thank you. Uh, it's so sad. I just need a few moments to myself. <sighs> it's something like so. As I say, like so human, right? But it's like, fuck, man. Uh, Cortez. Good dude. It's fucking I keep saying it's just like it is it is so sad like every everything he has been just going through, man. Areas tagged of interest to you. One moment, please. Sucks. But I like that we could do this stuff for him, right? Like it's not just watching from the sidelines like, oh good. Oh, that sucks. You know. I don't know. It's cool. It's cool because it's like, it feels like it's actually helping. It's doing something, right? And we kind of gone through here. General Rock is just kind of hanging out. And, oh, hello. Oh shit, Athena. Hey, I remember you. Shepard, right? Heard you're fighting the Reapers. Matriarch Athena. You were working on Ilium. How'd you end up here? <laughs> nah. 
With the Reapers making noise, I figured it was time to get somewhere safer. So I moved here. I don't think so. I've seen some video footage of you looking at Liara. Wait, that... Wait a minute. What? That was her? That wasn't just yeah. like... Oh. Patriarch Benazio was, um, was her mother. Uh-huh. She doesn't know it, but I was her father. Wait, what the fuck? No shit. No, no fucking way. Okay. Wait, okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. So, wait. Because we talked with her. We talked with her. In Mass Effect 2, right? We did. She talked about, like, her whole... Her past and everything, right? We had a really cool conversation with her in Mass Effect 2. And then, yes, in the security footage, we did see her... Looking at a photo. And it looked like the photo of Liara, right? But I didn't know if that was, like, actually... It was very... It was hard to tell. Like, really, what the picture was. If it actually was Liara, if it just happened to be just, like... Her looking at another one that kind of looked like we are. I don't know. I don't know. It seemed very vague at the time to make a connection like that. But I guess it makes sense now. It makes a lot of sense now because that actually was her looking at a fucking picture of Liara. Because because Athena is her father. That is some fucking shit. What the fuck is it? Wait a minute. So this whole time, her father. You mean you were her other mother, right? No, I didn't pop her out. Hell, she's never even met me. Sorry, if you were human, you'd both be called the mother, regardless of which one gave birth. Well, I'm not human, am I? Anthropocentric bag of dicks. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, like, if you were human, yeah, you don't have to, yeah. Like, come on, Shepard. God damn it. But, no. That's great, and she never even met her, so she doesn't even know. Liara doesn't even know that Benezia and Athena were her parents. And so she, what, she moved here just so she could be, like, closer to Liara? Is that the idea? It's, I mean, obviously we called her out for doing something like that, right? <laughs> What the fuck? That's crazy. Because we just like talked to her kind of on a whim in Ilium. What the fuck? You should talk. Shouldn't spy on her. You should talk. Liara would love to meet you. Why? She doesn't even know me from a hole in the ground. Benezia ran off before the kid was born. Besides, this isn't charity work. She's one of the biggest intel brokers in the galaxy. And she's got some shady connections. Like a boyfriend who used to work for Cerberus. I only worked with Cerberus to fight the Reapers. And you're not with him now, I know. If you were, you wouldn't get within a light year of Liara. Who Is shit. that a threat? I'm no commando, but I've had a thousand years to learn to fight dirty. Nobody messes with my girl. Anyway... You combine her work with Benezia, and... Well, the matriarchs might have ordered a hit if I hadn't agreed to keep an eye on her. I bet she'd like to meet you. <sighs> yeah. We'll see how that goes. I'll be real, I didn't know. I d Maybe it, it probably would have been a good idea to do that in Like, I didn't know if that was going to get, like, real intense or defensive. I mean, obviously. God damn it. I respect that shit, though. Because she was like, nobody messes with my girl. Even though she's kept her distance, she clearly is not a fool. Right? She knows... She knew... She knew and knows about us and Liara. She knows that. She knows that we weren't just some random person. 
and then to say, if we were still working for Cerberus, we wouldn't even get close to Liara. She would, she would make sure of that. That's fucking cool. I can. Res <sighs> Damn. And that's a good idea. I mean, I would hope they actually do. I would hope they actually do talk. That'd be cool. Would be. Yara. The bartender over there? The matriarch hired by the Asari government to track my movements? She's your father. I know. Damn, the way we just drop that on her and <laughs> just like, you know that one? Yeah, that's your dad. Like, no subtlety or, or really delicate reveal, just like straight up. And then she knows. Of course you do. <laughs> you know. I'm a very good information broker. And you haven't talked to her about spying on you? If I did that, they might send someone who wasn't as sympathetic to me. Besides, this is hardly the time for family reunions. Make Liara talk to her. It's your choice. Well, I don't know about May, but I feel like, like you know, a strong persuasion. Liara. Oh, fine. Oh, all right. Strong persuasion. Excellent. Come on. Can't blame the matriarchs for keeping an eye on you. I am not my mother. You did threaten to flay someone alive with your mind. I had to make them take me seriously. I wasn't going to actually do it. And you bugged my office on Ilium. That'd be the logical conclusion. <laughs> yeah. She bugged her. God damn it. What the fuck? What? I. It's a, it's a very small interaction, but I like that it is, is even <laughs> happening. So the matriarchs were keeping an eye on her. And part of doing that was sending her father to watch out and watch over, keep eyes on. Interesting. Well, I mean, basically, Lara's been going solo for, like, a long time, especially after Benezia left. So it really was just her. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how this develops. This could be interesting. It would be good for her. Cause she doesn't have her mother anymore. She doesn't have any family, actually. Except for us. The crew. So. Long term, this could be really good. Really? I hope so. <laughs> but... That's cool, though. That's a fucking... I, I can't even... That was... Literally, that happened in Mass Effect 2. I'm oh, sorry, like, it's actually, like, really caught up with me. Like... Matriarchs aren't gonna do anything to you. Especially in the middle of this damn war. My reports don't show much activity from the Asari military against the Reapers. Come on. You know how Asari work. Infiltration and sabotage. But against Reaper forces, that's... I know. About as useful as tits on a Hanar. Good thing we've got the Turians and the Krogan to do the heavy lifting. Our people just aren't built for the front ranks. Damn. I ain't true, though. But... Wait, so... Do I just have to... So, yeah. My dad was a Krogan. Yes, I'm aware of that. So... That makes you a quarter Krogan. That's not how it works. I'm a thousand years old. I've had kids with Hanar. Don't tell me how a sorry reproduction works. Wait, I have a half sister who's part Hanar. I thought that wasn't how it worked. God damn it. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my god. I mean, it's not that crazy when you really think about it, but it's just kind of. It's wild. That's what it is. That kid with Hanar. Father was a Krogan. What a what a wild family tree. And then that she's a quarter Krogan. 
like that works in human how like human DNA works but like with that because clearly like Asari really stick with their Asari I mean I guess like just aesthetically they're just always very much Asari like maybe the color change right is different but like their 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 tones are a little different but the, basically my thing is like what is what does being what a krogan do like what would that really what what parts would carry over right because that we we did have that conversation briefly in mass effect one of it like how they like the sorry reproduced and like the like some stuff is like carried over but it seems like the Asari genes are always like the most dominant. All I'm saying is if you feel the urge to headbutt something, that's generic. <laughs> I have never wanted to headbutt anything. Really? According to the council, a little bit? Come on. I do not headbutt people. <laughs> All right, fine. Don't go all blood rage on me. Oh my god. Or what? You'll tell the other matriarchs to order a hit. Hey, that's not gonna happen. She got serious. Don't you dare. But come on, not even not even a little bit. Nazi and I were together for more than a century. You loved her? Of course I loved her. She was so smart. Always thinking. Nice too. Hell of a lot nicer than I am. And damn that rack. I mean, even before she hit the matriarch stage. You don't need to tell me everything. Lord. God damn. It's not wrong, but it is wild to say. Nazi was the only one who ever listened to me when I said the Asari were stuck in the past. Only difference was I wanted us to stand on our own. She wanted alliances with the other species. Is that why? Why it ended? Nah. Well, maybe. I don't know. Mostly it ended because she wanted to solve things a smart way. I wanted to fight. Those aren't mutually exclusive. Yeah. I hear you've racked up quite a body count. But then, you are a quarter Krogan. <laughs> now you're doing it on purpose. This is... I'm, I'm glad there's more. I didn't I didn't realize. I've, I've picked it up now. Like, you know, you're gonna... You come back to them, and the conversations continue. Not just, like, over time. So... It's great. It's great. I'm glad they're actually having like full conversations. Is there more? No. I was getting really invested. Damn it. It was pretty clear she was leaving. Can't be the wise counselor when you're married. Why not? Sex appeal. No species only pay attention if they want to have sex with you. So you have to be available. Mysterious? What? That's not true. Shepard listened to me. And how many times have you popped his thermal clip? <laughs> you have to make it sound so tawdry. If it's all civilized, you're not doing it right. Oh my god. That's really funny. Holy shit. What the fuck? I made her promise to let you go your own way, though. No matter what she wanted. Really? I knew you'd be special, kid. Any daughter of hers. I told her, you're treating her like a baby bird, Nezzy. She's gonna raise one hell of a storm with those little wings. Nezzy. Wing? You okay? Yes. Thanks. Little wing. She said Nezzy. That's so close, like... It's not just where like you could tell the way she's talking, like she actually did care about Benezia and she's the fact that she was the one that convinced Benezia to let Liara go off and do her own thing, right? 
not like try to control her, like direct her in a certain way. It's cool. Better to remember her like this than as whatever she turned into with that Saren bastard. It wasn't her fault. She was trying to stop Saren, guide him as a force of good, but she was indoctrinated. Look, I heard stories about the Reapers messing with your head. They're more than stories. I've seen it. Every Cerberus soldier is a Reaper slave. She fought it with every fiber of her being. She even broke free and helped Shepard on Novaria before she died. She said it was like beating your hands on glass, watching what your body was doing. All this time, I blame Nezzy for it. Thousand years old, and I still don't know crap. Thanks for telling me. Oh, I'm, I'm damn glad that went both ways. The fact that, I mean, obviously, right? Like you hear about indoctrination, you don't really get it, right? It's because it sounds like such an outrageous thing. Like that, really, like mind control, really. Sure, she wasn't just like siding with them, and it's like, no, actually, it's literally how it works, which is even scarier, right? And, uh, and yeah, the comparison to it, like, you're just watching, you're just watching it happen, and you can't control anything. It's the worst. Take care of yourself out there, okay, kid? I will, Dad. Aww. <clears throat> I've called a few friends. Commandos. Eclipse girls who uh, owe me some favors. They're all yours. Just tell them where to go. You're giving me a sorry commandos? Well, you're too old for me to buy your damn pony. You're the best father a girl could wish for. Ah, God, wholesome. Fuck, it's all, it's, it's all worth it. It was all coming together. Damn it. So she, she gave, she actually gave Liara a, a set, like a number of Asari commandos to utilize. That's crazy. I can't blame the matriarchs for keeping an eye on you. I am not my mother. Mm, you did threaten this Okay, so that just loops back around. That's fine. I had to make that's fucking seriously. great. Holy shit. I wasn't going to actually do it. And Damn. Okay, I didn't I didn't know we were actually going to find like so many and by so many I mean like two two sets of interactions, right? Like with with Cortez and then with her and Athena like <laughs> What? That's so that's so cool. I'm glad we actually took a minute to come back here, right? I know we gotta keep, we gotta, we gotta get back to the ship, but, glad we did, glad we did. This was great. All right, cool. Well, we'll be back on the Normandy. All right, we're back here, back on the Normandy, ready to continue on, right? That was, we had a cool couple conversations, and we have to go check. I want to go check out the the war asset table because we've gotten we gotten a number of updates for that recently and i've been meaning to go back there and look at what we got right. oh met some old friends at citadel memorial lieutenant steve cortez oh shit shepherd after you left the refugee memorial i met an old friend who was helping out colonists with logistics she and her buddies were rx alliance pilots damn good ones who left the service to build a life on the frontier. They're homeless now, and when I told them about the forces being collected, they were eager to join. I've attached their contact information to forward to Hackett. Hopefully they can help. Thanks again for helping me through this. Feeling good. Think maybe I'll hit Purgatory next trip to the Citadel. Want to join me for some drinks? Steve. Ah, wholesome. Yes, that'd be great. Another reason to go to Purgatory. Another reason to hang out with Steve. That's great. But so he, he met some old ex-Alliance pilots. And we're going to give that information to Hackett. So we, we got we got some forces. We got even more forces. This is great. There you go. Rogue fighter pilots. God damn. Has it got any, any chit-chat? Nope, not this time. 
Okay. All right, let's go. So we'll check these, see where we're at, right? So, War Assets, Alien Alliance. Let's look at the Alliance. Right, what do we get? So, yep, we know Jack is here. She's part of this, but she's not part of the crew. But she's on board. That just sucks. I'm never going to get over it. Rogue Fighter Pilots. Cool. When humanity began to expand its borders, experienced pilots were needed to establish colonies in the uncharted reaches of space. Some Alliance personnel heeded the call, and these luckless men and women have since been driven out of their colonies by the invading Reapers. After speaking with Lieutenant Steve Cortez, a few of these highly skilled fighter pilots agreed to fly against the enemies who destroyed their homes. That's really cool. Like, genuinely... <sighs> That's badass of Steve to go to go and do that, right? He went and go. He went and went to go and spoke with them. And the fact that these guys are pushed out and they're ready to fight. Hell yeah. Alliance Fifth Fleet. Right? Update. A pair of entrepreneurs was persuaded to switch from creating financial programs to advanced weapon targeting VIs and to sell them to the Alliance just above cost, which... We did that when we were on the Citadel, right? We talked to those guys and we're like, you know what you can actually do instead? And that's why cool. That's cool that they actually made a difference. A big difference. Not a, okay, maybe not a big difference, but a difference is better than no difference. That's my point. Fucking Kasumi. Kasumi Goto. He's wanted in over a dozen systems for sabotage, hacking, theft, and a laundry list of other crimes. The Alliance is willing to overlook Goto's indiscretions in exchange for her help with the Crucible. In addition to her expertise with electronic security systems, Goto can acquire important technology thought lost or stuck deep in enemy territory. No one dares ask how she acquires these items. True. She's so fucking cool, man. She's so fucking cool. And the fact that we, we did talk to her, and she didn't want anything to do with any of this. But we're like, hey, we could really use someone of your expertise. And she's like, I, I don't know. And then he's like, hey, when this is done, nobody's going to go, like, nobody's going to check your pockets, right, on the way out. So, you know, go go for it. She's like, damn it. You know how, you know how to get me. That's crazy. That's, that's cool as shit. Obviously, alien races that were once content to stay on the fringes of galactic politics are now stepping up to provide whatever is needed to win this war. If we could pull a fleet like that together, that'd be badass. I mean, I don't know if we're going to get another one of these. Right? The Ascension. Yeah. Yeah, that's gone. But, what do we got? Terminus Fleet. Terminus Fleet is an assortment of mercenary vessels and pirate ships bound together by little more than common geography and a fear of the Reapers. Despite this volatile mix, the fleet seems to be functional as one under the leadership of criminal warlord Arya Talak. Criminal warlord Arya Talak. That's... That's pretty cool. Because the ter it's the, the Terminus systems, right? And so she's... We're here... This is bringing the, the Blood Pack, the Eclipse, and eventually the Blue Suns together. Warlord Arya. What a title. So updated. The Blood Pack's mercenaries have been compared to floods, wildfires, and other calamities. It recruits Krogan and Vorcha, probably those with no regard for collateral damage. Preferably. <laughs> On the rare occasion when brute force is, sufficient, is insufficient, the Blood Pack is willing to deploy weapons of mass destruction normally banned in Citadel space. Rare. When brute force is not sufficient, they are willing to deploy WMDs. <laughs> They're like, well, we don't give a shit. If we have to do it, we're going to do it. They're out for blood. Update. The Eclipse Corporation specializes in 
smart security solutions. Developing tactics around surgical strikes, sabotage, and electronic warfare. These mercenaries are supported by a sizable army of combat mechs and rely heavily on tech for support in combat. So we got we got the aggression brute force and ruthlessness of the blood pack. But then we have the technological warfare that the eclipse provides. And then we eventually have blue suns, and I'm gonna be curious what that update's gonna look like. But Spectre Unit. Spectres are the left hand of the Citadel, enforcing laws and stopping crimes with galactic repercussions. While Spectres usually work alone, the Reaper threat gave cause for these extraordinary agents to assemble an elite unit capable of operating in enemy territory without backup. Spectre Jondam Bao, while not their leader, is the group's spokesperson. He's passed on information intelligence gathered by the unit to hack it and the fifth fleet that's cool he's our guy i mean we we did the whole thing with him on the signal so that's actually it's cool he's part of our our assets now hanar and drell forces then how have spent their warships to engage the reapers to repay commander shepherd for saving their home world god damn Though their navy is relatively small, the Hanar have also provided the services of their best Drell combat specialists. They are accomplished spies, saboteurs, and assassins, trained at an extremely young age. While the Hanar are normally loath to send trusted allies into open warfare, these are desperate times. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool as hell, right? We got, we got, basically, we got the best drill combat specialists it's cool shit right and then the fact that they give us credit for saving their home world they give us credit for saving the hanar home world <laughs> like god damn it's really it's it's cool it's cool right because it, it was like a small moment it was a small moment on the Citadel with Kasumi and um, Spectre Jondam, right? It was cool, but um, I guess that that was that was that was saving the the Hanar homeworld, right? Because the the indoctrinated Hanar diplomat they basically had triggered a virus upload, and the whole point of that was to disable the um, the the defenses of the Hanar homeworld. Basically putting the whole planet completely susceptible and probably would have been destroyed. Like, like bad, right? But we were able to stop it. We were able to stop it and actually prevent that from happening. And thus, I guess, saving the Hanar homeworld. <laughs> but we couldn't have done it by ourselves. It was a group effort. But... I like that. I like that we get, a, we get that, um mentioned right and because we did that because we stopped that whole situation they were willing to give us their drill commandos which is sick super cool gotta go to the cabin though because now now I have to be like super aware super aware about these guys being back. <laughs> right? Oh my god. Uh, it's nice that we got them. We got them. We got them. We got them back. Kelly. Kelly out here looking out. Right? She protected our fish this whole time. Saved them. Yeah, little guy. Just gonna use that real quick. Alright, so they're fed, they're taken care of. Is there anything... You know what? Should we... Kind of want to see... Should we... What should we follow up with? Before we go, right? Because I feel like... 
I feel like we've talked to everybody. We haven't talked... You know, yeah, let's actually go... Let's go to engineering. Right, because we haven't talked to Javik in a minute. And I want to talk to Diana. Diana again. Oh, he is... He's not here. He's not in this one. He is... He's in the other room. Okay. Got it. So now... Well, I don't know if Diana would have anything to say, but I want to check anyway. Commander. Commander. Excellent. We haven't done, like, a main mission in a minute, so I don't imagine it would really change. But, hey, you know... I think... I think we're, we don't need to buy anything. We don't have any money, right? We need more money. So, yeah. Let's go. We've been, we've been kind of roaming around, flip-flopping. <laughs> now to get back into business, right? Because I don't think we got any more. Yeah. Cool. Commander. All right. Yep, trainer. Okay. All right, cool. Let's do the thing. Let's ma carry on. Are we going to leave orbit? There's nothing to find here. Honestly, I would be very surprised if the re because I I just I was just thinking about it right like scanning around here and like that attracts the reapers. I was just trying to think like I'd be very surprised if the reapers even came here, right to the citadel area because even though they're here technically right like the citadel is their their relay to get in and out right in and out of dark space so even though they're here they're doing this that would be their way to like leave so i don't think they would they would risk it because they'd have to build it again right they had a whole thing going on but anyway need to focus so Going over here. Uh, we have not seen that enough in this game yet. We, we we've been we've been bouncing around, and really we we're stuck on the Citadel for a minute. So it's nice to be out here in space again. Pato. Pato. Pato, a carbon carbonaceous asteroid. Yet notable for element zero deposits. The deposits, which indicate it was an extrasolar capture, were discovered by the Solarians shortly before they found the mass relay in the Pranash system. Naturally, all element zero was mined out long ago. The asteroid is named for the clan of Peto the second? Peto, or no, Peto Il Ilginen Mal Eneste Dutsolum Amar. Known to humans as a Marsolum. Hell of a name. Interesting. This shy, retiring eccentric was an undergraduate when most important astro astrologists, astrogeologists, sorry, passed off the first ESO deposits to him. He ran the faithful test that discovered its mass-affecting properties for three centuries after his death, rival clans fought for credit for the discovery. Truth won over after a lengthy academic war. That's... Shit. So literally the first Ezo deposits that were ever found were passed off to him. Did they just not think about it or not really care? They're just like, whatever, you have it. More important, astrogeologists. They're like, we have better things to do? And they just gave him the ESO deposits? Or was this... I guess that's really irrelevant, right? He ran the fateful test that discovered its mass-affecting properties. So he is the guy, Amar Salem. Amar Solemn, 
is the guy that discovered the properties of Ezo. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, 19 Earth years, 29 hours. Negative 154 Celsius. It's cold. Okay. Hello, guys. All right. Helgus. Helgus. I don't know. Spacer investors are fond of saying you can't exhaust a gas giant, but the Slarians have certainly tried. Helgus. <laughs> Is home to a thriving community of robot miners and those who work in helium three collection and refinement. More than sixteen of Helgus's more metallic moons have been settled. Oh, damn, the giant bears the name of the Helgus Corporation, which combined the best efforts of several Solarian clans to manufacture the advanced shielding necessary to colonize the planet's moons. The planet's magnetosphere retains massive amounts of radioactive ions from Pranash, the system star. Because of this, the cities on the moon, the moons, are subsurface, protected from lethal radiation levels by shielding and thick layers of rock. Alagis <laughs> was brought out centuries ago, was bought out centuries ago, but the name endures as a symbol of Solarian innovation and cooperation. Impressive. A uh, colony founded two, 500, I don't know, two, fucking shit, I was looking at this, 560 BCE, population 129,000, capital IFA, 16.8 hour days, short days, 6.8 years, god damn, yeah, I was like, we're kind of still, we haven't needed the fueling, which is, I guess, it's a good. That's a good thing. Right? Anything out here? No, because we already scanned out of here. Maybe, maybe there's some. I'm gonna read the rest of these planets first before we start getting real crazy with the scanning. Maybe we scan our way out. Maybe that's probably the smarter thing to do. But Dragel, Dragel, Dragel. <laughs> The tiny rock planet Dragil is notable for its status as a strategic reserve of heavy metals. It's been warmed, warmed slightly by a thin atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon monoxide, but otherwise remains hostile to life. In the clandestine fashion typical of Solarians, a military outpost orbits the planet, but does not appear on Alliance star maps. Huh. Exeradrill. Dragel is named for the metro metrolineal clan that sent the first manned mission to the planet's surface. However, a thriving minority from the Silar clan, who sent the first manned mission to orbit the planet, insist to this day that their landing attempt was sabotaged by the Dragels, and the planet should bear their name. Relations between the two clans remains tense. Really? <laughs> so Dragel is named for the clan, but then <laughs> the Silar clan is over here, just like, well, actually, technically, we would have done it. It would have been fun. They interfered. They messed up. They messed up our whole thing. Me, their fault. Oh, Sirkesh. Let's see, Saradrill. Saradrill. Sirkesh's sister planet is in a weak hothouse state, retaining enough carbon dioxide and monoxide to form an atmosphere thicker than a garden world's, but thinner than a true hothouse like Venus. In the early days of Solarian space exploration, the species saw mining the planet as an engineer engineering challenge. When the Solarians made contact with the Asari, the robot mining industry developed for planets like Saradrill quickly became the galactic standard. The planet is named for the Saradrill clan, specifically the Solarian Dalatras Saradrill 
Ilsorsen, Malnetia, Partore, Tor, Tore, <laughs> Nora, <laughs> who sponsored the first manned mission to the planet. In antiquity, the planet was named for various gods, as well as the astronomer who first classified it as a planet, rather than a star. But Nura's political machinations won out, and the planet now bears her clan's name on all standard Solarian star maps. Damn. She had so much power that she got her name over the name of the gods for the planet. Hardcore. Orbital period half a year. 22 hour days. So this thing is, is going. Flying. It rotates the same, roughly the same as Earth, but it goes around the sun way faster. 325 degrees Celsius. It is hot. Yeah, let's look at Sir Kesh before we go and do our meeting. Sir Kesh, the Solarian homeworld has been likened to the jungles of Earth. I was going to say, it's very pretty, very earthly. Right? Pretty to look at, teeming with life, uncomfortable to live in, and dangerous to the unwary. <laughs> Shit. The technophilic... Yeah. Okay, yeah. The technophilic Solarians had significant pollution and waste problems early in the development of their society. I imagine. They also embraced social solutions just as quickly, and through complex breeding rules, Zerkesh now maintains a crowded but sustainable population. The planet tends to be wetter than Earth. Its Larian cities spare no expense to collect and provide fresh water, as one might expect from an amphibious species. <laughs> it, yeah, that... Uh, that, yeah, that, that part checks out. Due to Sir Cash's location in the galaxy far away from dark space, it is yet to be invaded by the Reapers. But its rulers are all too aware that they are in the path of attack, because they could not strike the first blow. As their military doctrine suggests, many already consider their forces at a severe disadvantage. So their military doctrine... Basically, they cannot attack first. They can only react. Which I guess is, like... I guess in a way that's good, because it means, like, they can't go start some shit. Right? But that... That also means... If you see the shit that's already started coming for you, you have to wait for it to hit before you can do anything. Or before you can hit back. And so it's just like, that's... It's a... They're very much a double-edged sword. But I, I imagine... I don't know. Is that really a... They can't strike the first blow. They're willing to fight, but not... They don't want to instigate. I guess that's the idea, right? But 25 Celsius, percent atmosphere pressure, 21 and a half hours, 1.2 Earth years. So very much a fine planet to live on. Dangerous, if you don't know. But it looks nice. 10.3 billion. That's crazy. <laughs> 1.1 million orbital stations, but 10 billion people, 10 billion Solarians. Crazy. That's definitely it's as crowded as it says. Okay. This is it. Diplomatic ships meet with the diplomats. There is the diplomatic ships of the Solarians, Turians, and Krogan float far away from one another, out of weapon range. <laughs> Messages sent by each faction indicate that they were they would welcome the Normandy as a neutral meeting ground for their diplomats. The fact that they have not agreed on a ship to serve as a neutral meeting point before now does not bode well for the negotiations. It is definitely a tone, because... <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, the fact that they all agreed to meet is already impressive. But, yeah, the idea that they're just like, is it going to be our ship? No, it's not going to be our ship. It's going to be, it's not going to be your ship. Like, they don't trust you. There's no trust here, obviously, right? It's kind of part of the problem. But, here we go. Commander, the Salarian Dalatras and Krogan clan chief are ready to come aboard. Have them brought to the conference room. All right. I hope this doesn't start another war. <laughs> the Krogan is in no position to make demands. The Krogan has a name. Erdnot Rex. And I'm not just some junkyard varin. You unleash whenever you're in trouble. Fuck yeah. I've got my own problems. Reaper scouts have arrived on Tuchunka. So why should I care if a few Turians go extinct? Trying to draw out negotiations will get you nowhere, Rex. I have no time for it. Just tell us what you want. I'll tell you what I need. A cure for the genophage. Holy shit. Absolutely not. The genophage is non-negotiable. Dude, what a fucking move. Holy shit. Holy shit. What the fuck, dude? No, that is such a fucking move. I expect nothing for nothing less from Rex. What a fucking dude. First off, holy shit, he's actually here. I love that. Oh my god, it's actually fucking Rex. But what a move. Cause he needs we need the Krogan. And it's like, okay, what do you need? to get you to help us and Rex just fucking puts it down and says we need to cure the genophage and it's like fucking what damn he took this opportunity I respect him for it son of a bitch what's your concern why are you so opposed to the idea Dalatress because my people uplifted the Krogan we know them best you mean you used us to fight a war you couldn't win? It wasn't the Salarians or the Asari or even the Turians that stopped the Rachni. It was Krogan blood that turned the tide. True. And after that, you ceased to be useful. The genophage was the only way to keep your urges in check. Oh, fuck. Dalatrash, you may not like him, but Rex is right. Insulting him won't change that. I won't apologize for speaking the truth. We uplifted the Krogan to do one thing, wage war. It's all they know because it's all we wanted them to know. How condescending. Holy shit. Like, that is exactly how they treat it, right? And then saying, like, you know, Rex is 100% right. It's like, you only, we only stopped the Rachni because of the Krogan. It was literally no chance. And so they... They they basically let the Krogan got the Krogan in and pushed all this and they were able to overpower the Rachni and stop the whole thing. But to fucking say it, fucking Dalatras to go and say, you cease to be useful, and therefore we had to, we had to like stop this shit. Is insane, and then. Even the two, I'm not gonna fucking apologize for speaking the truth. God, I was gonna say like, not even treating them like humans. Like they're not treating them like, like they're their own, like they're just a tool, right? Like the Krogan as a whole, were just a, a sword to be pointed in a direction, right? And then once that direction was no longer needed, that was it. Fuck. Your people miscalculated. You had to do it. And this is... Every time the genophage is brought up, it's one of those things where it's like, there's no... It's it's intentionally... Like... There's no, like, right answer. Because there's no... It, what I'm trying to say, like... It's ambiguous. And it's intentionally that way. Because... It was a necessary evil. Right? then you have to weigh the options too of 
Like, if it's the same situation. Like, if you cure it. Because the concern is really by curing the genophage, the people out there, like, like Daltrans, right? Is you cure the genophage, what's stopping the Krogan from just going back on a warpath, right? Thinking them to be like that. And while they do love war, and that's like their thing, right? To assume... To basically say, well, if we let you off the leash, you're just going to go attack everybody is. It's kind of fucking. Well, very condescending. Right. Your people miscalculated. You had to do it. Uh, we uplifted the Krogan to do one thing. Wage war. It's all they know because it's all we wanted them to know. Your people should have thought the matter through, then. Was it really a surprise that Krogan revolted? That's precisely my point, Commander. We made a rash decision. We turned to the Krogan in desperation. It's the same mistake you're about to make today. No good can come from curing the genophage. Wow. At least she agrees. It was a rash decision, and they didn't really think it through. But then to say that this is going to be the same thing? No. The Krogan deserve a cure. We don't have a choice. Well, we don't really have a choice, but... I... I don't know. I do believe... I believe the Krogan deserve a cure. Because, like, how are you going to fucking basically neuter an entire species for eternity basically forever actually right aside from grunt grunt who's avoided or well he hasn't avoided the genophage the genophage still has affected him but it's different but anyway like i believe they do deserve a cure and if rex has essentially i would say he's like the speaker of the krogan right but he's he's their diplomat I feel like he would have some level of control, not control, but like influence over maybe them not going on a warpath, if that was a concern. The Krogan have paid for their mistakes. The genophage has gone on long enough. 1,476 years, if you're keeping track. It was a thousand years of peace, free from these brutes. Enough. Whether or not they deserve a cure is academic. It would take years to formulate one. My information says otherwise. Wait, what? A Solarian scientist, Malin, grew a conscience. He was on my planet, testing a cure on our females. I remember. His methods were barbaric. But what you didn't know is that other females survived his experiments. What? So the Dalatress here sent in a team to clean up the whole mess and to take them prisoner. No way. Where did you get this? It, it could be a fabrication. Don't insult me. Those are my people. They're immune to the genophage, and you're going to give them back. Dalatress, is this true? What a rat. How will curing the genophage benefit my people? What the fuck, dude? Holy shit. <laughs> Wow. God, Rex showed up with fucking he Oh my god, he came he came to win. Holy shit. Wow. So Malin, who we let live, by the way, we let live in Mass Effect 2, right? Because at the end of everything, Orden was not that guy to kill. Right? He's better than that. But Malin actually came over to Rex and did a very intense... We remember Malin's experiments from Mass Effect 2, right? But he worked with Rex, and he was able to actually cure... He was actually able to cure the genophage from a couple <laughs> fucking Krogan females. He actually did it. That's crazy. 
and fucking Dalatras sent in operatives to fucking capture them. Like, literally figured out, found out that they had cured the genophage and then stole the people, stole the Krogan that were cured. And basically silenced, tried to silence this whole thing. Fucking rat behavior. Shit. How curing the genophage benefit my people? And that's the kind of thinking that's going to fuck this whole thing up because it's not all about you. I get it. From Dal Trias's perspective, right? It's like, but no, you need allies. Like, stop making enemies everywhere. How long do you think you'll last alone against the Reapers? Because if you don't help, that's how it'll end up. And I'll be the last friendly Turian you ever see. What's it gonna be? Fuck. The females are being kept at one of our STG bases on Sirkash. But I warn you, Commander. The consequences of this will be felt for centuries. Will be nothing compared to what happens if the Reapers win. Let's get the females. You're not setting foot on Sirkesh. This will take time. It happens now. As a Council Spectre, Shepard can oversee the exchange. Hell yeah. We're going. I won't forget this, Commander. A bully has few friends when he needs them most. It's, it's a weird irony you saying it, you saying that, right? Holy shit! Fucking god, yeah, we're going, we're going in. I love that we called her out, called her out for bullshit. Fuck that. Okay. Okay. We're going, we're going to Sir Cash. So obviously, we're bringing gears. And. I we brought we brought Javik last time. We did. And it is kinda interesting I would want to bring him again just because like part of me wants to know if he has anything to say about stuff. Like it's always interesting the way they they react and have quips, but I also kinda wanna bring Liara for some reason. I Okay, so what is... I can't imagine it's going to get that crazy, would it? I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I'm trying to, like, plan ahead, but I'm like, who are we... Who would we fight if we if we end up fighting? Right? Uh... Error Javik. Damn it. I don't want to bring Javik. Okay. Is this worth trying out here? You know what? Maybe. We'll give it a we'll give it a shot just in case. Increase damage. And then spare shot capacity. Piercing. Uh, we're, we're gonna do that. That seems, that feels right. And we got these modded. Okay. Don't know if I want to change these mod these mods, I like those ones. Alright, so for mm. He's using the Viper. Kinda do 
Maybe, maybe giving him the Indra would be a good idea. And give him Pierce. Alright, we're gonna give you this. Increases accuracy. Well, Pierce, more, more rounds. Do those. Cool. Okay. Nice. Do we do we want to? That's right. Okay. All right. Sorry. I realize we have to get we have to do we have to do some of these more melee damage, health and shields. I feel like that's a good idea. Health and shield bonus or melee damage. I feel like for us being such a a fragile sniper. Having more health and shield is good. Uh, increase melee damage. Decrease shield recharge delay. Definitely going to be the next one. Can you... You know what? Let's... Yeah. Let's see how the mines work. Right? And then... Javik... Java, I need to... Get you some more stuff, bro. Uh, increase shield power damage. I feel like... Power damage would probably be really good. Right? Weapon damage. Power damage. More power damage. Now what do we have? Shield, squad mate shield recharge speed. Power damage duration. Ooh, Okay. Oh, weapon damage, though. Kind of make it just like a full, like a wild powerhouse. Alright, increase squad weight, power damage duration, force. I kind of want to do the shield recharge speed. I feel like that's just overall good for, good for everybody. Alright, dark channel's really cool. Lift grenade, pull, slam. Definitely, if we put more into slam, and then we do lift, then we can kind of combine both of those effectively. We're actually landing on Sir Kesh. That's cool. I didn't think we would. I thought we were just going to do the meeting above. That's cool. This is the Solarian homeworld we're headed to. They aren't used to seeing Krogan here, so let's keep it simple. We land, get the females, and leave before anyone changes their mind. I still don't trust a word they say. That's fair. It's probably for the best. Plan for the worst. Hope for the best. <laughs> Expect the worst. Okay, so... So they don't know. We're basically going in and taking them. They didn't... It's not like they have permission... To, like let them go is that the idea this is gonna be like a covert covert operation be friendly when in doubt scare them if they start backtracking the angry krogan act couldn't hurt who said anything about acting just try to keep it verbal these females are the best and probably last hope for my people we'll bring them home rex you've waited long enough for this day a lifetime I appreciate the assist, Garrus. Hell Figured yeah. you'd gone soft sitting on your throne. Forgot how to hold a gun. He wouldn't be king then, would he? Who's that? Who's that? He's a Prothean. Sometimes I'm not sure if the Normandy's a warship or a traveling freak show. <laughs> but as long as he can hold a gun. Commander, I have the Solarian base on Saturday. That's great. Set her down. Ah. Oh, that's cool. But no, I'm so that just that little, a little small bro moment with Garrison Rex. That was cool. Commander that was Solarian great. Ground control says we don't have clearance to land. Tell them the Dolatris authorized this herself. I knew they'd never keep their word. Hold on. Let's see them try to stop a Krogan airdrop. Oh shit! Okay, he's just going. Rex. God damn it. No! 
We have an unauthorized landing. And who authorized you to hold my race hostage? Um... Hello? No. Bro, stop. This... Halt! Stand down! Hold your fire! Commander Shepard, restrain your colleague. We only found out about this transfer a few moments ago. Well, you should have heard it's a few moments too long. We can work this out. You should apologize. This Solarian hospitality always come with sharpshooters. This is an insult to the Alliance. Please understand, no matter what some politician might say, Krogan are still considered a hostile race. I wonder why. However, on behalf of the Solarian Union, I apologize. But we must insist that Krogan remain under guard. <clears throat> what the fuck? Stay here, Rex. Or else? And if we insist otherwise? You'll have another war on your hands. If anything goes wrong and all bets are off. I was like, I'm not about to tell him what to do. I'm Paddock Wicks, and I appreciate your understanding, Commander. With war on everyone's minds, our people are on edge. Whoa, wait, what the fuck? Careful! Watch the containment shield! Brings back memories. They were much smaller in my cycle. <laughs> As you can see, this base contains sensitive information. I was gonna say, like, we, we didn't... Wasn't the, the fucking... The the previous shadow broker, he was like the last. Wasn't he like the last of his kind? And so they have one here. What the fuck? And then him saying fucking brings back memories, obviously from that. And then smaller in his size. So he even. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. What kind of work goes on here? Evolutionary trials, morphological simulations, exogenetic assessments. Nothing is ever simple with Solarians, is it? Science has always been our best defense. The research we do here has kept Sirkesh safe for millennia. Oh, I'm sure. Like studying Krogan, good place for a cover-up. <laughs> Seems like a good place to hide things you don't want the galaxy to know about. Like female Krogan. I'm aware of how this must look, but it was for their own good. They were in poor health when we found them on Tuchanka. We brought them here to stabilize their condition. Uh-huh. This whole planet smells wrong. I'd like to see them. Of course. I'll need to clear you for the lower levels. Give me a few moments and meet me near the elevator. All right. Please prepare for yard specimen arrival. Made with Podog Wicks when ready. So, the way he's... Like, I don't believe them for a second. When they're... He... Like, let's be real, right? It's like, oh, well, we, we took them for their own health. Actually, they were in poor condition. They were just going to die. We couldn't let that happen. We couldn't do that to them, right? That would be awful. <sighs> Horrible, right? So we did this for their health. And then Rex, he's played a lot, but, like, the second this shit goes sideways, he's going to fucking you know, pop off. This visor is certainly something i'm glad it does come off in conversations this is kind of a big issue with mass effect 2 unfortunately right um so i didn't wear a lot of the helmets that we had in that game but this is nice that we can we can do this because it's i mean it looks cool it looks cool right but no we're gonna have to figure this out because unfortunately i've run out of time for this episode and i really wanted to kind of push even further and, and everything but thank you so much for watching. We're going to pick this up. We're going to go through the rest of Sir Kesh next time, next episode, hopefully soon. Yes. Goddamn. And I'd rather, rather in here than have, you know. Uh, I, w I, wanted, I wanted to keep going, but we're, it's just unfortunately, it's just the way my schedule is working out right now. Not, not the best. Not the best, but really, I appreciate you guys for watching. Seriously, this is a hell of a setup. This is a hell of a setup. The way the way fucking Rex drops the whole, I want to cure for the genophage at the meeting, in order to gain the uh, the assistance of the Krogan army. Fucking cool, cool shit. 
But then the fact that Daltras fucking covered up the fact that he did kind of cure the genophage, right? But I guess he wants, like, more of a mass-produced solution, or maybe even, like, if they do figure out how to actually manufacture the cure, like, perfectly well, like, bottle it, essentially, then to, like, distribute it. I don't know. Stuff like that. This is gonna be hella cool. So, I'm looking forward to this one. This is gonna be fun. This is awesome. This is cool. So, we'll see you guys in the next video. Right? We got shit to do. So, thanks for watching. See you guys then. Bye-bye.